So an interesting piece of news came out over the past few days regarding Bethesda and Sony. Looking at the history between these two companies, it hasn't always been hunky-dory. They definitely had quite a few speed bumps and issues along the way, and just to give you some context, way back when there was issues with Fallout 3 on PS3, which maybe that's not necessarily Sony's fault directly, but there definitely were some problems at the time. So of Skyrim's DLC had its release date pushed back on PS3, and then at one point they were saying it might not even come out at all. Then as I'm sure most of us actually know about more recently, we actually had the whole debacle with PlayStation modding. We found out PS4 mods wouldn't be coming out at the same time of Xbox One mods. And then in September of 2016, Bethesda actually came out and said that Skyrim and Fallout 4 aren't going to get any mod support because of Sony's restrictions. Fast forward to October of 2016 and that was reversed, you would get mod support on PlayStation 4, but it would be severely limited and that's kind of what we have today. No custom assets on PS4 means that a lot of the awesome and really cool mods that you see in Fallout 4 and Skyrim modding aren't on PlayStation. It is objectively the worst place for mods right now, and it actually does doesn't even end there. A couple months ago, during an interview that Todd Howard was doing with GameStar, he called out Sony as being the limiting factor as far as crossplay goes for Fallout 76. He said he would love to do crossplay for Fallout 76, but Sony is not as helpful as everyone would like. And that has been echoed with other game franchises, where Microsoft was all gung ho to actually do crossplay between their games, but Sony was putting their foot down and blocking that. Their closed loop system that we've seen with Fallout 4 modding and Skyrim modding, and in addition to this crossplay issue, has seemingly forced Bethesda into almost giving them an ultimatum. And that's with the news that Bethesda may not release the Elder Scrolls Legends on systems that don't allow crossplay. Play. Of course, that system being the PlayStation 4. Even though that's the main thing I'm focusing on, I feel like it's really important to get all of that context, to get the long history of kind of conflict or mini conflicts between Sony and Bethesda. Because if there is one company to actually put their foot down around this, I think it would be Bethesda, based off the experience they've had with Sony thus far. The Elder Scrolls Legends is a current card game that uses some of the things from the Elder Scrolls. It's like many of the other card games out right now. It's currently live on PC, Mac, and mobile platforms, but the console release that was planned for Xbox, PlayStation, and the Switch is said to be coming later this year. Well, during an interview at QuakeCon actually asking about the cross-playness of this game, Pete Hines kind of said, it is our intention in order for the game to come out, it has to have those things, those things being crossplay, on any system. We cannot have a game that works one way across everywhere else except for this one thing. The way the game works right now on Apple, Google, Steam, and Bethesda.net, it doesn't matter where you buy your stuff. If you play it on another platform, your stuff is there. It doesn't matter what platform you play on, you play against everyone else who is playing at that moment. There's no, oh, it's easier to control, or it has better frame rate on this system. It's a strategy card game. It doesn't matter. Matter. The interviewer then looks deeper, saying, well, you know, Sony's probably not going to support crossplay, so what does that mean for this game? Does it mean no PlayStation release? And Hines' exact response was, but those terms are essentially non-negotiable. We can't be talking about one version of Legends where you take your progress with you, and another version where you stay within that ecosystem, or it's walled off from everything else. That is counter to what the game has been about. So, I mean, we'll see what actually happens here. They never really officially said we're not bringing it to PlayStation if they don't do this, but they pretty Pretty much got as close to saying it without actually saying it. Now as I brought up before, Fallout 4 mods and Skyrim mods were cancelled for PS4 and then of course ended up coming out, almost like the cancellation or going public with that cancellation was leverage. This could be something similar, even though it was a response to a question in an interview, the news of this and the backlash from the community could be a bigger deal. At the same time though, the Elder Scrolls Legends isn't nearly as big as Fallout or the Elder Scrolls, so it doesn't have that staying power and so Sony may just not care if it doesn't come to their console, or at least not care nearly as much as they did with PlayStation modding. Either way, I'm personally really happy to see this. I like that Bethesda is putting their foot down. Sony has been causing a lot of issues for gamers over the past few months, between the crossplay issue and personally, I just am very against their stance on modding. In a time where Microsoft is focusing on actually some of their games being playable on both PC and Xbox One, even if you just buy one copy of the game, and actually expanding the modability of their consoles, Sony's doing seemingly the exact opposite, trying to lock down their console even further. If Bethesda actually doesn't release a game on there for 
for this reason, that'd be a pretty big deal, and I'm hoping it happens. This is an interesting narrative because it will invariably affect mods for Fallout 76. We know Bethesda is planning to bring mods to the platform through the use of private servers. They'll probably function differently, but the question remains, are we going to see the same restrictions for Fallout 76 that we saw for Fallout 4 and Skyrim on the PlayStation? Especially for an online game, I'm sure that's going to be a major issue. The experience will be objectively better for Xbox users and PC users than PlayStation users. It doesn't seem like console modding is as big of a selling point for Fallout 76, so I imagine it will be less of an issue as it was the first time around, but either way, I'm very curious to see what happens with all of this. As always, again, I thank you all for watching. I do hope you enjoyed this video, and I hope to see you all next time. Later.